Hello everybody, this is Dr. Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue looking at igneous rocks. So this particular video is going to focus on section 5.12 of your textbook. So the next thing we need to think about is the settings in which we can expect to find large bodies of magma building up in the crust. So these are sometimes referred to as magma chambers or intrusions. So what are the environments in which we expect to find these intrusions forming? So the first environment in which we expect to find a large amount of melting occurring, thereby producing a large volume of magma which can get stuck in the crust, is at oceanic hotspots. And we've covered that in an earlier video. We have a situation where we have, of course, a mantle plume getting stuck at the base of the lithosphere, causing melting, and that leads up to, leads to the formation of large volumes of magma, some of which can get trapped in the crust, forming magma chambers. Obviously, we know that as part of the process of decompressional melting, we end up forming large volumes of magma located underneath our spreading ridge at our divergent plate boundary. We also know that we produce large amounts of magmas due to subduction at both ocean-ocean and ocean-continent convergent plate boundaries. This, this uh, magma will obviously rise up, it will enter the crust, and a lot of it will get stuck in the crust. Obviously, we are going to have intrusions associated with continental hotspots and also continental divergent plate boundaries as well. And the final example where we might get magma being generated in large quantities is at a continent-continent uh, collision zone, because our continent-continent convergent boundary. And we know this is because some of the continental crust can get pushed down a little bit uh, under the other piece of continental crust, and that can induce melting. So all of these environments are going to have the capacity to produce large volumes of magma, and a lot of this magma never makes it to the surface. Most of it gets trapped in the crust, where it will pool and it will form these intrusions. So what are the main types of intrusions that geologists see? Well, the first type of intrusion we see is something which is referred to as an irregular pluton. And you can see it's referred to as irregular because it has a highly irregular margin. It's all over the place. Now, most of these plutons, if you look at them in three dimensions, will have an approximately cylindrical form to them. Now, if we can see a, an irregular pluton that has this uh, cylindrical form, we commonly refer to them as a stock. And they'll typically be quite steeply dipping, so they'll be near vertical. In terms of the surface expression of irregular plutons and stocks, you will typically see less than 100 square kilometers of igneous rock being exposed. So beneath us here, we can see we have a, a picture of a, uh, of a stock. You can see here it is here. It's marked out by these lighter gray rocks. So you can see one side coming up here, then it comes down here, and there's the other side there. So you can see it's coming around like so. So this is the uh, stock right here, and this over here represents the rock that's being intruded by the magma. So the next type of intrusion that we can get are sheet-like plutons. So you can see in this instance what's happening is we have magma rising through the crust and it's reaching a point probably where it's achieving a similar density to the crust that it's trying to move through. Now this means obviously because the density is similar the magma can't rise any further. And so what can the magma do? Well in that case the magma is going to start spreading laterally. And so this is going to result in a intrusion which essentially is laterally quite extensive. It's very wide, but it's rather thin in terms of its height. So it's going to have a sheet-like shape to it. So typically these sheet-like plutons will exploit some kind of pre-existing horizontal weakness. Typically it will be a bedding plane between two layers of rock. And we can see it here. So this intrusion here is exploiting the contact between this rock unit down here, which has these black spots, and this rock unit here, which has these darker stripes. And so the contact between these two units is being exploited as a plane along which the magma can move. Now, when you get this kind of feature forming and it's relatively small from a geologic point of view, we classify it as a sill. However, if the geologic feature that forms is quite large, we classify it as a lopolith. So in this picture, we can actually see an example of a lopolith. So here we go. You can see we have a set of mountains here, extremely mountainous terrain. So we know these are going to be you know, pretty high. And you can see that there is a band of medium gray colored rock. You can see here's the upper edge of it coming through here, like so. And the lower edge is coming 
around here like so as well and there's darker rocks beneath it and there's darker rocks above it as well and so this is a horizontal sheet like intrusion so this is going to be a lopolith due to its size it's very very big the final common type of intrusion is going to be something which we refer to as a batholith. So batholiths form in areas where we have multiple intrusions uh, entering the same area of the Earth's crust. And this is relatively common, because think about it. If, if, a, if an intrusion, if a pulse of magma can find a path along which it can move, then when there's a new pulse, chances are that new body of magma is going to exploit the same route. And so this means you can get multiple intrusions all being in place within a relatively confined space on the Earth's surface. So typically these magmas will often have um, a similar composition. So in terms of the rocks that you'll get, let's say the first, you know, the first intrusion produces granite, chances are the later intrusions will also produce felsic plutonic rocks. Now, in terms of batholiths themselves, they typically consist of multiple irregular in, uh, intrusions. So we get lots and lots of stocks all entering the same area. And so this means that a batholith actually covers quite a large area. So batholiths will often cover an area in excess of 100 square kilometers. They'll often cover areas of thousands of square kilometers. So if we look at this picture here, you can see here we go. Here we have an area in which we have in, um, a mountainous terrain being built up. And this represents the Sierra Nevada batholith of California. So all of this medium gray rock, which we can see making the mountainous terrain right here, this is all granite or other similar felsic plutonic igneous rocks. And this has been formed by multiple intrusions, all entering the same area of the Earth's crust, one after another. Okay, thank you for watching everybody and have a good day.